Hey everybody, Ron from ModelWorks here. I hope everyone's having a good Thursday. Jules is here, my lovely wife and business partner. Hey guys. And usually we do these live streams over at Fallout Hobbies, which is one of my other businesses that I have going on. But I've wanted to start doing some live streams for ModelWorks because, you know, there's some fun stuff to work on and maybe show you guys some of the kits and whatnot. So today, uh, we'll be on for about an hour, and the kit that I'm working on is the brand new 1650 scale Essex, which I am releasing on Saturday. And it's going to be a limited run kit. Um, like all of our kits, they're print to order. I only release a certain number that's available and then print them and then once they're all fulfilled then I ship again. Then, then I do it all over again of course. So I'll release a handful of these for sale on Saturday, get them all printed up over the next like two weeks or so, ship them out and then you know do it again. So this kit I'm pretty excited about. This was actually one of the first uh, Starship models that I designed years and years and years ago, but I finally decided to release it as a kit. And when I opened it back up, when I opened the files back up after not looking at them for years, there's a lot of like little details and things that I realized that I could add to it to make it a better, a better kit overall. Um, it's multi-part, 3D printed. Uh, windows are hollow, so you can do lighting through them. There are lots of nice options, like you could have a bridge that is more of like the uh, JJ verse style, uh, or you could have a bridge that's more of like the classic no open window, because I know that's a point of contention with some of these models. So there's that. It does come with clear and opaque pieces. It comes with um, warp coils, impulse engines, um, buzzers, deflector dish piece, um, bridge piece, all in, uh, all in uh, clear resin. So that's exciting. It's got a little shuttle bay, which is fun. So let me get the shuttle bay pieces together here. So the back part of the ship has a nice little The shuttle bay itself is two parts, but then there is little shuttles that actually go into it. Here, I can't attach the little shuttle bay, so I just like that. And then there's the little shuttle bay. There's that. And if you can see in the camera, there is a tiny little shuttle bay you can light up and do all sorts of cool things. And there's little shuttle pods that are kind of similar to the ones that were on Enterprise because the ship was supposed to only be like 20 years or so after Enterprise. So it's more of that old school Federation look. And another thing that I added to it was um, retractable uh, base cannons. So these big square blocks on the front on the back, that's where the base cannons would go. They come on like a little screw like this. And there you go. Now it's armed. Now it's got some cannons coming out. So there's ones for the front, ones for the back. If you want to make it a fully armed ship, you know, you can. So I'm just kind of going to get into this today for a little bit and just glue a couple pieces together and stuff like that. And uh, that's uh, where we're going to go. So the first part that I'm doing is um, just kind of going all over all the pieces. I'm going to, everything's kind of test fitting pretty well. There might be a couple of little gaps that I need to like clean up with some putty or whatever. No big deal. It all fits together nice and snug. There's some alignment pins to help things line up evenly 
so we don't have like lopsided saucers and whatnot. Some things I can get together in advance, and other things I'm going to leave as sub assemblies for painting. I gathered around a couple LEDs that I had in my stash. I'm going to use uh, some red and some blue LEDs. I'm going to try to get, you know, some lights in for the impulse engines and whatnot. And these are blue strip LEDs that I'm going to be using for the uh, the nacelles. And I'm also going to go crazy and use a tenant control circuit to make some blinking nav lights, but that's not going to be in this video. I will do that at a later date. What I really want to do is get a couple pieces glued together, run some wiring, maybe get like the next cell solder soldered, and uh, just kind of go from there. This is a more advanced kit. It's not like a quick build, you know? Now, I uh, kind of rushed into this because I neglected to mention this. I'm so used to doing this over at Fallout Hobbies. For people that haven't seen my live streams over at Fallout Hobbies, if you want to uh, ask questions or comment or anything like that, Jules will read them out loud and, and I'll answer. That's the format that we use over there. So we're going to do that here too. Start with some of these kits. You might find a random piece that needs to just kind of be cleared out, maybe like a support pin or something. I do clear out these kits, I do sand them and do like some major uh, sanding and cleaning up before I ship them. But there might be some minor things, and with all model kits, you know, you gotta assemble the model kits. That's that's just the name of the game. Pylons in here now. I want to get these pylons on and start running some wires. If you're not familiar with um, 3D printed kits, uh, there's many different ways to produce them, many different types of printers. They all have different methods with different pros and cons. We use um, top of the line form 3 printers here that um, are, are very, the, the end result is very nice. It's uh, laser cured and then sometimes, you know, post cured with UV light and all that stuff. It takes a little while to produce the kits, but the end result is, is really, really worth it. These resin kits um, can be a little bit fragile sometimes. It's just the nature of the material. So for this one in particular, I provided holes in the pylons where if you choose to, you could run some 1.5 millimeter brass tubing through it, and that would help you know, reinforce the pylon a little bit in case, say, it falls off the shelf or something, and you don't want it to shatter.
snip that down because that's a whole little thing. Alright, cool. That's, that uh, brass rod will also help just kind of like firm up the, the pylon. Again, not necessary, but if you want the model to last or if you don't want it to like, you know, snap if it falls off of a shelf or something, maybe you go ahead and do it. I had some resin models collapse on a shelf on me once. Very sad. Very sad. How's it going over there, Cruz? Pretty good. Lots of people watching. Like I said, if anyone wants to uh, have questions, comments, or just wants to shoot, shoot the shit a little bit, that's what we're here for. There's a lot of kits for uh, model works coming out this uh, fall and winter. videos throughout the rest of the season. I'll be announcing one of the coming soon kits in the uh, newsletter that's coming out this weekend. Nice and secure. That's it. Uh, I'm going to be rebuilding certain areas of this. I'm going to be attaching the bottom bulb because I'll be running some strip LED through, like, out the back here, through the neck, and then kind of curling it around here to light up all these side windows. So I'm going to need this neck glued on in advance because all the little wiring is going to be glued on. Try and speak up. Um, some people are having trouble hearing you. Oh, I'm, okay. Usually told to talk quieter, but <laughs> I will try and speak up. So that's kind of like a little sub-assembly we got going on right there. And this piece can go on too because this is going to be the same color as the hull. So I don't mind if I get that on there right now. Yeah, I originally started building this kit, um, well, designing this kit in 3D um, several years ago. It was one of the first ones that I actually designed, and I just had this idea. There was some cool variants of the Daedalus class that I saw on different sites, and I also really liked the old school design of it, and I also... Even though a lot of people did not necessarily like the show Discovery, I did like the aesthetics of some of the some of the ships. Not everything, you know, but but some of it. So apparently this wasn't glued in well enough. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a uh, a Daedalus class that had kind of like the best of the TOS elements, but was modernized in a few areas. There was also other things about it that I just kind of found a little weird. Like for instance, on some of the drawings, there's like multiple deflector dishes here. But if you actually look at the way that the ship is aligned, they would be hitting like all the, it would be hitting like the lower hull. It didn't really make a lot of sense to me. So that's why I decided to opt for like a front deflector dish. 
you know, it was supposed to have photon torpedoes, but there's no photon torpedo launchers on the model, so there's that. Um, no phasers on the model, but because of the era, that would be kind of the retractable phase cannons that Enterprise had, in, you know, the NX Enterprise. So li little details like that were things that I decided to add. I decided to make the windows um, round and not square like in TOS, more um, the nacelles were one of the biggest changes to the whole thing. You know, they're tapered. They have, uh, they, they come tapered to a point. They have like the, kind of like the JJ back on them, but you don't need to light that up if you don't want to. It still looks just fine. And the front is designed more like the, uh, the NX Enterprise. So just kind of like mixing together some different eras and some different aesthetics and pulling it all together. It's a relatively nice size kit, I think, when it's all done. Uh, this would be... I forgot. I, I literally did the measurements the other day. Like, uh, almost 9 inches long when it's done. Like, 8.7, I think. So it would look good next to like a TOS Enterprise or even like a Discovery Enterprise uh, that's 1,000 scale. It would definitely look the part. Kind of kicking around the idea of doing a limited number of these in 350 scale, but that would be a lot of printing. But I might. I might. All right. So moving on. Let's attach some lights to So these, uh, the clear screws, it's, I'm going to give them on the screw like that because it's just easier to keep the pieces together and prevent them from warping or distorting. I kind of pre-drill, well not pre-drill, but in the design file, leave like a, a hole there. That could be for like an LED or just like a guide placement if you need it. It's not exactly three millimeters, but it can always be. I could probably enlarge it up to three millimeters before I start printing it. Minor things. I've been making a lot of minor tweaks to this kit for the past, like, two weeks, honestly. I wanted to release it a while ago, but I kept doing test prints, editing some pieces, you know, making sure things fit right, making sure things wouldn't, like, create print errors that, like, hold up production, stuff like that. So if I put, like, one blue LED in there and then mask off the rest of this, that would probably be sufficient. It's exciting. That's good. I'm not going to put the end caps on because I am going to put a blinking light in there. Uh, you know, one of the formation lights. So I want to leave this area open so I can pull the wires out. You guys don't use tenant controls you really should they're one of the best i mean they, they are the best for uh track model lighting i'm sure i'm gonna use that though this is the nacelle block or the warp coil block rather so that just needs a little bit of finagling So, that's pretty easy, right? Not too hard to get that in there. You need a couple of beads of super glue to kind of hold it in, which we'll do in a minute. But this whole thing can be illuminated. Uh, what I'm going to end up doing is creating, like, uh, just cutting some tape down and masking off these squares right here so that only these little, like, square panels are illuminated. I'll do this piece separately. I'll paint this piece separately. This is the intercooler. Painting this intercooler. Just kind of with the pop right on there. These pieces are very delicate, but required. They definitely, you know, look the part here. So, let's get these warp pieces. 
Let's see. I want to glue those pieces in now because I'm going to be running the blue strip lighting behind it, which I'm going to wire up in just a minute as well. So I'll be drilling holes. I'm going to drill holes, solder these up. And I have red LED here. That's going to be for the buzzers. So move those up too. Honestly, if I get these warp engines wired up within, you know, the next 40 minutes or whatever of the video, that would be enough for me. Because <laughs> this kit is not going to be one that is built and assembled in a day. They very rarely are. strip lighting So I'll try to adhere it to the inside back end of the nacelle, but I don't know. It might need some extra glue to hold it in place. I always use enamel copper wire because it's thin. It's thin and it's enameled, so it's not going to short out if it touches itself. So I can run circuits like this where a positive and a negative wire are running next to each other and it won't short it out, which is great when you're running through very narrow spaces like these uh, channels that I put inside the pylons here. So no uh, questions or comments yet? Uh, just from Jacob. 
a lot of people seem to be watching. Um, nobody's sitting. Quiet crowd. Some of the other live streams are to be a very talkative bunch. Attaching the red LED, but I'm leaving like a little hanger of the insulated wire because that little hanger is going to be what connects to the light stream, the LED stream. Uh, Matthew McQueen says the audio is pretty quiet. He's having trouble hearing too. So let's try and maybe talk a little bit louder. Um, okay, I'm talking at my normal volume. I didn't think I was talking too low. Is the sound quality on Ecamm? I already checked it. Everything I have selected, um, it should be muting any kind of echoes or background noise. Well, I'm trying to talk as loud as I can. So, maybe there's something wrong with the mic, but uh, it should be picking up the mic right by my face. No. Okay. 
we've been using this um, streaming software and they keep updating it. So I don't know if that's had an effect on things. Yeah, Ecamm keeps updating every, like, couple of weeks, and it's kind of been screwing up some of our other live streams, too. Not major, but minor uh, annoyances. Okay. This side is wired up. Now let's move to the other side. Wired up. So that the PC here. So I'm literally just using the, uh, the enamel copper wire to kind of like tie a knot to the hole that I already um, cut out of here, drilled out of here. And because it's enamel wire, uh, it's not going to actually make a connection until I solder it. So I'm going to be soldering this uh, just like in a minute or two. And that'll make everything you know, kind of come alive. I'll, of course, insulate these, too, just in case there's any chance of the, of the pads crossing once they get all crunched up inside the model. Not the wires. I don't need to insulate the wires, but I mean the, uh, the actual soldering area will be... I'll put some liquid rubber on it to insulate it. Matthew, is that any better? I tweaked another setting. Let me know if that improved the audio. Okay, we're tweaking settings over here. All right, let's turn on the soldering iron. Got some ancient flux. Rusty solder. Which just fell back into the bottle. I hate when it does that. If you guys use the kind of solder that's in the tube, I hate when it falls back into the bottle. It's the worst. <laughs> just give me a minute. Apply some flux along these connections. Now, I am going to say, just in case there's any like hardcore electricians out there, I am not a hardcore electrician. I know how to make things look cool but I am not, I'm self-taught, I'm not the best practitioner of electrical soldering standards. So if anything I'm doing looks weird, I'm sorry.
putting it on the support pin for a minute. Did that setting make a difference? Uh, nobody else has said anything about low volume, so maybe. Maybe? Okay. Maybe. Okay, two more, no, four more things to solder. And then I'm just gonna solder the two connectors over here. So that I can test it all out and make sure that it all works because if I don't solder it, because it's enameled, it won't connect. Moment of truth. Hey, it works. Fantastic. Well, one side works at least. What's going on here? Oh, I see. This connection's not completed over here. That should be better. That's better. That works. Fantastic. I'm going to unplug this soldering iron before I have the annoying habit of burning myself. Let's seal this up. And while the liquid rubber is curing on these, I'll move to a different part of the build. If you guys don't use liquid rubber, it's it's amazing. It's like $8 at Home Depot or something. Lasts forever. It only takes like maybe 10 minutes to dry. It's not even that, that bad.
Okay, so while that's drying, I'll move on to a different section of the model. Maybe work on these nacelle caps a little bit. There's one. There's two. So the type of resin that I use for clear uh, already is a little bit diffused. It's not optically clear, although it can be buffed down and polished to be optically clear. But I think that that's actually pretty advantageous for what I'm doing here with the buzzards because it creates like a nice diffused effect. So let me show you what I mean. Let me just get this battery in place over here. There we go. So see, that's already like a really nice diffused cap. I mean, you could sand that down a little bit more if you wanted to diffuse it a little bit more, or you could put I don't know, a piece of paper or maybe a piece of scotch tape in it if you wanted to diffuse the light a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with with where that's at as is. Also, if you put the light, you know, up closer, you have a hard point, but if you move the light further back in the cap, it gets a little bit more diffused. So I would definitely mount the light bulb somewhere back here, not up front here. It just looks prettier that way. So we can do that. These back caps I'm not gonna touch right now because they are they don't even need lights. They're gonna be picking up residual light from the inside of the nacelle here, but that's gonna be an LED from the tenant controls ones. So that's separate. Let's work on the front a little bit. What time do we have right now? It's huh? 12, 13. 12, 13? Cool. We got about 15 minutes left to work on things. So this already has a bridge piece in it. Pop that out. There we go. Um, this model has two bridge options. I mean, two bridge dome options. The bridge is, there's only one bridge. It's clear. But you could either do the bridge with the window like that or you could do like a solid bridge i think for the purposes of my build i want to do the bridge with the window i know some people don't like that i'm sorry i'm sorry if you're one of those people that takes offense to a window in front of the bridge <laughs> I distinctly remember that from like an episode of Original Trek where like the Enterprise was like shrunk down and Kirk was looking in through like the front window even though it's a view screen and there was like little frozen Enterprise crew guys in there. Was that Cat's Paw? That was the Cat's Paw episode. Or no, that was a different one where the Enterprise got shrunk. Never mind. Seems the Enterprise had a habit of getting shrunk back in the day. Okay. Now this one, you just got to be a little bit careful to make sure that it gets nice and aligned okay that looks even to me let's put a little zip kick around there and that's good definitely want to do the phaser cannons i already pulled the one out 
So with the phaser cannons, you have two options. There's the one where the cannons are out, or there's blocks that you can put in that just have like closed cargo doors. So that's completely up to you. You know, whether you want to have this thing guns blazing like it's in the Romulan War, or if you want to uh, have it be more peacetime vessel. Let's get the other side. Just a little dab of glue in there. Now it's got two phase cannons pointing right out. And I'm gonna put the rear ones in too. things fit in a very specific way in the back. Oh, because I had them in upside down. That would help. Uh, Bob's checking in with us. He said, how are you guys recovering from the jab? Good. Oh yeah, we got our... Sore. Sore. Come on. This one, the back one's a little bit hard to get aligned into place. But once you get it in there, it's fine. kind of cram that one in there it's just a weird angle more than anything all right one's in get this other one in second one went in easier okay yeah because in order to get the phaser cannons to look like they're actually aiming in a proper direction they're at like an angle and it's just a little hard to eyeball but you just gotta play with it and it'll eventually get in there beat a super glue just to hold it in place Phase cannons in and the bridge module in. Easy enough, easy peasy. Let's move that off to the side. Let's see, is this? Yeah, I think that's dry. All right, so first off, I'm gonna get the uh, clear piece in. So I'm gonna run a bead of super glue on either side of this to hold it in place. Okay. I'm gonna 
do as much of this as I can by hand and then bring the tool out. There's a lot of entendres. just fell out of alignment. I had it in there and it just fell out of alignment. Get back in there. Okay. And then push that side down. Fantastic. Let's run a bead of accelerator along here that should solidify the super glue in the crevasse right there and lock that piece in place yep Just to really finalize it off, I'm going to put a bead on either end here. Cool. And then a bead right in there. I just put it right on the end just to kind of lock in the two ends just to make sure it really doesn't wiggle at all. Okay. Let's peel the adhesive off. Get that all the way in there. Take it all the way to the back. As far back as I can go with that. Yep, I was right. This adhesive is not going to hold, so I just need to do the same super glue thing and just put a bead of super glue in the end here just to kind of hold this uh, LED strip in place. No big deal. It's just the adhesive isn't really that strong on these strip LEDs, I've noticed. back out okay and let's fold these wires in there and I'll do something to kind of hold that in place maybe some putty or something like that channel back it out slowly <laughs> okay there I reduced the slack on all those
And let's test that out and hope I didn't screw anything up along the way. Because <laughs> that happens. That just happened to me last night, actually. I was wiring up an Excelsior kit. And it didn't want to cooperate with me. Cool. And there we go. And that's a really nice light on the inside of the nacelle that just lost its grip there which means that i could even go ahead and glue this piece in there's the alignment pin We got one nacelle wired up. And that's probably going to be where I stop the video for today. I'm going to have to set this LED back a little bit further. I'll probably use some putty to hold that in place. McQueen is asking for conversion kits, a uh, Abe class torpedo cruiser style conversion for the disco price would be cool. Abe class for disco? Uh -huh. That would be pretty cool, actually. That'd be a lot of torpedoes. There are other things for disco. I was working on, I was working on a Larson class, um, and, uh, I could do an Abe class. That would probably be fun. It would mainly be a torpedo launcher and a neck swap out, so that wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, I did want to also work on a Miranda class conversion for the Discovery Enterprise. So all those things are happening. I'm still going through a lot of the old FASA designs and reworking them. I uh, am releasing a Klingon D-18 soon that is done being designed it just needs to be like test printed and tweaked and stuff like that um, I'm also releasing a Soyuz conversion for the one 1000 scale um, Reliant kit that Polar Lights makes um, which will be a really nice conversion that has like full shuttle bays and everything like that and um there's a lot more stuff down the road that I'm working on. I'm working on a Merchantman uh, model kit, like a really detailed Merchantman that could be like larger, more like 350 scale. A um, couple different ship ideas, a lot of conversions. I'm working on other things like uh, shuttle bays, phasers, you know, options like that, like tiny little add-ons, but things that could make a big difference if you're making a conversion kit. But yeah, I could definitely do like an Abe torpedo launcher. That would be that would be just fine. I was also thinking about making some alternates for the runabout model kit too, like a photon torpedo launcher for a runabout. Uh, I was actually doing that on my own personal one, but might release that publicly as a kit as well. So there's a lot of options out there. Uh, we are dedicating more print time to model works uh, starting next week. So there's, you know, gonna be new kits hopefully every month. I mean, at least, I would like to at least have a full new kit, maybe like every five or six weeks. And then, you know, have like some smaller little upgrade kits and stuff along the way. So all that's gonna, all that's in the works. And then popular ones will get restocked from time to time if the demand is called for. So that's all out there. But anyway, 
I think I'm going to bring this video to a close for now. I just want to give you guys kind of a, a look at it partially assembled there. I think it's a pretty, pretty nice ship. I'm pretty excited about where this is going. Um, I obviously got to get this dangly thing in here. And then I'm going to be, this is a, a white LED strip that's going to be connected to these cords and run all the way through the uh, hull, the back hull here, through the neck, and then kind of curl around in the bulb area. And then there's going to be a blue LED in the impulse engine, a blue LED in the deflector dish, and I got to build and paint up the inside of this shuttle bay. See here, the shuttle bay is cool. So it pops on right on the back there. And the strip LED lighting will be uh, illuminating the inside of the shuttle bay as well. So you'll be able to see all the way down into there, which is pretty nice. And yeah, so that's, that's kind of where we're at for this right now. I am going to be releasing a limited number of these kits this weekend. Um, and you know, once those ones are fulfilled, uh, then I'll, then I'll do another round, but it might be like two or three weeks in between, you know, the first release and then the, then the second release. Um, so, you know, if you, if you really want one of these, hop on it. I am going to be releasing it in 650 scale, which is what, what you're looking at here. And then a slightly smaller one 1000 scale, which would be about maybe this long. John says he'd be interested in a one 1000 indomitable class for either the TMP and or the disco enterprise. Mm. Disco would be cool. Indomitable. Yeah. I could do that for disco. See the thing, I mean, if I was doing TMP, I would probably make it for the one 1000 scale kits. Um, I mean, I guess I could do 650, but I, I'd probably be more into the 1 1000 scale kit sizes for that. But realistically, most of the conversion kits I can scale up or scale down um, on the printer, but within the limitations of what the printer can actually physically print. So, you know, something like the Ptolemy kit that I have, that's huge. And that has to be multiple pieces. Um, I was thinking about releasing this guy, releasing a couple of them in 350 scale, but they would be really expensive because they'd be big kits for 3D printing. But, um, you know, if, if there's a few people interested, sure, I'll do it. But that's kind of where I'm at with it right now. I think 650 is a really nice display scale for this ship. It's it looks good. It even looks good next to the 1-1000 Discovery. I mean, it, you know, I don't know how much of a stickler some people are for scale or not, but if you're just looking for a good display size, it's there. All right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm going to try to do another live stream for Model Works. Uh, maybe not next week, but maybe the week after. I kind of want to do this every couple weeks and like show off things that I'm building or conversion kits, stuff like that. And uh, just, you know, kind of kind of like hang out and, you know, please feel free to shoot over questions or comments or hit us up. Make sure to subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, if you go to the modelworkshop.com. I already linked. Um, oh, you linked it? If you scroll up in the comments, it says join our away team. Oh, and great. You even get like a coupon for signing up and stuff. Too. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this weekend we will be announcing restocks for a lot of our kits um, because I am like six orders away from fulfilling all the back orders for the store. And I'm just going to open up the gates and allow new orders to come in for a bunch of the uh, discovery kits. There's gonna be um, some of the Saladin will be available. There's gonna there's gonna be restocks available for two of the Tie Fighter kits. So that it it'll be it'll be a good weekend. So if you guys you know subscribe, you get the coupon. You could use the coupon this weekend, get an order in, save a couple bucks. You know, throw throw a model maker a bone. <laughs> but uh, anyway, be safe out there. 
it's getting to be fall, so it's a good time to uh, start, you know, just stockpiling up on your uh, on your fall hobby projects, and you know, don't. Uh, uh, Daniel um, wants to touch base with a quick question before we go. Sure. Uh, says, would the 650 scale also work for 1,000 if you wanted a larger Essex? It looks good as a 1-1000 scale Essex, if you wanted a larger Essex, yes. So, you know, when they kind of did Discovery, they retconned some of the sizes of the ships. So, you know, it's like Enterprise is suddenly, you know, 50 meters longer than it was before. Um, and if, you, if you've ever built the 1-1000 scale Discovery Enterprise, it looks about the size of a 650 scale classic enterprise model so it looks about 35 percent larger than it should for the size that it that it is for the scale that it is that being said this is a 650 scale model based on the original dimensions of a daedalus class ship so if you wanted to imagine that this was a 1-1000 scale, it would look good next to a Discovery Enterprise. It would look smaller, not too small. It would look definitely in theme with some of the details like the buzzards and the sloping, the, the tapered nacelles and stuff like that would definitely look in theme with the Discovery Enterprise. So I think they would look good next to each other. I plan on having them next to each other on the shelf and to the uh, to the layman that's not, you know, uh, so dedicated to scale, they would probably think that they're just supposed to be that big next to each other. So I think it would be a good match. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so I'll see everyone in, uh, in two weeks or so and uh, be safe out there. And we're going to make this a more regular thing. We're going to post a poll on the Facebook page and see what time you guys would like to see us as far as like a regular schedule. So yeah, I mean, tuned. yeah, we're going to be asking a lot more questions and being more interactive. Model Works is going to get pretty busy over the next couple months. So, you know, I'm excited about that. All right, everyone. Have a good one. I'm out. See you later.